Welcome to Red's Effects guys, today we are not going to have any stand-ups unfortunately because I'm really pressed for time but I did want to get this tutorial out to you. So let me just quickly discuss what we need to record before we jump into the effect itself. So what you guys need to record is two videos, one of you walking across the street or wherever you are and pretending to get hit. Now you need to twist your body in the opposite way of the car. So the car is coming from the left to right, you're going to twist your body from the right to the left. The second clip you need is obviously of the car driving across the street. Now, for all my energetic subscribers, do not drive super fast and break the speed laws, please. You don't need to, because we'll be speeding up the clip afterwards also in hit film as well. So that's enough for that. You know what to record, go record it, jump into hit film for express. And let's get hit by a car. Well, here we are, so let's get busy. Now, we recorded our footage and I have them all in a comp. Let's just see what we've got. So, first we have a clip of me walking into the road and pretending to get hit by a car. As you can see, it ends right after that, before I start to stand up straight again. Then, underneath that, we have the second clip of the car going across the screen. This one goes on for a little while after the car has already exited though. So, let's work with these layers first. Starting with our actor, let's move to the point where he acts out getting hit by the car. here just before he moves. Then split the layer using the razor tool. Now zoom in and trim either one or two frames out to make his action seem more violent and sudden. We are getting pulverized by a car after all. Then move to when he has just bent all the way down and split it again. Now grab the Rate Stage tool and squeeze that clip down a bit to make it more sudden and fast. Then just move the following clip back into place after the sped up one. Now select all your layers and hit this icon to make it a composition. Call it Actor and let's move on to the car. Next is our Death Machine. Let's find the point where our car is just about to enter the frame. over here and split the clip at that point. Then go to the end of the car clip and using the rate stage tool squeeze it down so that the car is faster than it actually is. Because remember guys, we don't want to break the speed limit. The amount you stage it depends on how fast your car was actually driving of course. Create a new grey layer and place it above your car layer. You can also trim it to start on the frame before your car enters the scene. Then using the mask tool let's just draw a very rough mask around the part of our car that's visible at this moment. Turn on keyframing for the mask's path and position and go frame by frame adjusting the mask so that it roughly covers the car until it's out of the frame. You don't want to be too precise guys, because that will take forever. Head to the controls panel and change the mask feather to around 30 to 40 pixels. Finally, head to the effects panel and search for the motion blur effect. Then drop it onto your grade layer. As always, let's tweak. Change the window size to 1, the sigma setting to 1.37, and the iterations to 1 as well. You can also set the down samples to 20 and the start down sample to 1. 
Right, now let's select all the car layers and make it a composition as well. Okay, now that those are done, let's get to the actual hitting part. Let's move to the point at which your actor gets hit. Then drop the opacity of that layer to 50%. Now, slide the car layer around the timeline underneath your actor layer until it aligns perfectly with the actor clip, time-wise, meaning your actor should react, getting hit by the car, when the car impacts you. Like this. At the point of impact, turn on keyframing for position on your actor's layer and go frame by frame moving the layers so that it moves with the car off-screen. There we go. Next is the tedious part, rotoscope masking. Split your actor's composition at the point of impact. Then using the pen tool or mask tool, draw a nice detailed mask around your actor on his layer. Now in the controls panel, go to the mask transform properties and turn on keyframing for mask path position as well as rotation. Then go frame by frame positioning and adjusting the mask so that it roughly fits your actor. You don't have to be 100% accurate here guys, but try and be a little bit accurate, as best as you can. It helps to turn the mask effect to none for this part so you can see what you're doing. Right, finally, after 100 years, that's done. Turn on motion blur for all your layers and we are done.